Hey guys, welcome back to another End Curses tutorial. Today's End Curses tutorial is going to be part number 13 in my Making Snake and End Curses tutorial series. I know I said that the last tutorial would be the last one, but um, someone had a comment that I wanted to address. Uh, it's something I've dealt with a lot before in End Curses, and I figured why not make a video about it, because if I've dealt with it, you guys probably have too. Essentially, the problem was that um, I don't know if you guys remember uh, my default timeout value, like the time that we wait before the game just moves on its own, was 300 milliseconds. Uh, so using that as an example, if the user presses uh, a key before 300 milliseconds is up, it doesn't wait the full 300 milliseconds. So if they press the key after 200 milliseconds, that last 100 milliseconds, it doesn't wait. It just starts, it just keeps going. So that means that the user can spam keys and it'll speed the game up. Um, so I'll demonstrate what I mean in a minute, but it's been a long intro already. So um, if you guys like this video, consider giving me a thumbs up. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, suggestions for future videos or notice something in this video, leave something down below in the comment section. Um, if you want to see these videos right when they come out, uh, consider subscribing and putting on all notifications. Um, if you guys want to support the channel a little bit extra, I've got a PayPal donate button down below. Every little bit helps. Uh, I couldn't do this without your guys' support. Let's just get started. So, um, first thing we're going to do, I actually have a bunch of numbered to-dos to keep me on track today. Uh, first thing we're going to do in our main.cpp file is we are going to update our speed value from 100 to 1000, just so, just during testing, so it's easier to see what's happening and what's going on and so that way I can explain things and now that we've done that I'm actually gonna show you guys the problem that I'm talking about so let's do a make and main um, alright so it's moving really slowly uh, which is what we want, it's waiting a full second between each turn so right now before I haven't edited anything yet we can spam the right key and it speeds up the game and the user, sorry the person who commented uh, was saying that they want to they wanted to wait the full amount of time before it moves so and obviously that's an understandable thing and curses wasn't really built for games so that's why they, there's no inbuilt function that says you have to wait the full amount of time it just waits until they press a key and then it continues so um, it's more meant for interfaces technically but so that's what we're going to try and fix today we're going to try and get it to wait the full amount of time so for instance if the user presses the key at 100 milliseconds it'll wait the last 900 milliseconds um, so that's what we're going to be doing so the, there's a couple things we have to do to make that happen um, and there's actually a bug I'm going to fix so the bug is that um, over in snake game here you'll see after we pause it's setting the timeout automatically back to 1000 it should set it to whatever the timeout was before but we'll, we'll get there so the first thing we're going to do here is uh, we're going to save our timeout value or we're going to create a variable in order to save the timeout value um, within our board.hpp uh, class down in the private section. Just add it right there. Um, and then down in the construct method, um, we're going to initialize that. So timeout, we're just going to set it equal to the speed that it was passed in. I don't know why I called this speed. It should really be called timeout. I'm not going to go and change all the references of speed, but we're going to save it as timeout within the class, so that's good enough for me. Um, then the next thing we're going to do is we want to actually return that timeout value uh, so that we can uh, set it back, set it to what it was before here. So um, we're going to have a method called get timeout, and it's going to return an int, not a void. Uh, so we're going to return the timeout variable. Simple enough. Um, then, all right, so back here in our snake game class, uh, we are going to get rid of that. Uh, to do there we go. Uh, so now in snake game, down in our process input method, um, what we're going to do is we're going to before the switch statement, we're going to save that timeout value. So save old timeout and set it equal to board get timeout like that. Uh, and then that allows us to down here set it to whatever the old timeout value was. Uh, Alright, so now that that is done, let me just get rid of these to-dos, and what is this initialize? Oh, that one's done. Uh, the next thing we got to do is up here, uh, we have to include time.hpp. Um, so I've, I've created a class called time.hpp in its own file here, I'll, I'll discuss that in a second. 
but you should go ahead and create a time.hpp file in the source uh, directory. So we're going to include that here at the top of our board. So time.hpp. Um, and here is that. Oops, let me just delete that. Uh, and here is that time file uh, I was talking about. The reason why I've decided to put this into its own class is because it the, it didn't really fit into any of our other classes. Because like the board's a view. Is the view responsible for time? Not really. The control or the snake game's a controller. Doesn't really fit in there either. Uh, I guess this would be a utility class. So that's that's why I've gone ahead and put this out here. Doesn't really matter if you wanted to throw it in a different class, you could. But for me, I think it belongs in its own class. And that way, down the line, if we have other time related functions or methods, we could throw them in here. Um, all right, so this time class uh, includes three header files here. They're all related to time. Uh, one disclaimer is this might not be 100% portable on all systems. I know time is weird in C. It's not all portable. So if this doesn't work for you for some reason, um, you can look up, oh, how to get milliseconds for my current machine. Uh, the current time in milliseconds on my machine um, and you should be able to find something but this worked for me and I'm on Windows running Windows subsystem at, for Linux WSL Ubuntu so I feel like it should work on Mac and Ubuntu I just don't know about like standard Windows but you can't run uh, and curses on standard Windows anyways I don't know try this out if it doesn't work try something else <laughs> but I didn't write this code. Again, another disclaimer. Um, I found this online and I just copied it and it works. So awesome. Just wanted to say that for sure. So you guys know. I'm not going to go into full depth of this, but th basically what this does, um, we're creating an object to hold our time. We use a, a function called get time of day, which creates a time object, a time now in this case. Um, and then we, we're getting the time in milliseconds from that time now object. That's what this math is doing. And then we return. Cool. So it's going to get the current time in milliseconds, which is going to be a big number, usually. All right, so with all of that in play, we can now finally implement um, the thing that's going to fix the problem we have. Uh, we're going to do that in our git input uh, method here. So instead of typing it all out and explaining it as I go, I think I'm, I'm going I'm to type it all out and explain after it's done. Uh, it's just going to make more sense to see it all at once. So. Uh, I'll be right back when that is done. So, all right. So uh, it's all in there now, and now I'm going to explain it. So, essentially, what we're going to do at the top of this function or this method is um, before we get our input, we're going to record the time, the current time in milliseconds. So, for for purpose of example, let's just say that the current time in milliseconds is 1,000. Extremely unlikely. It's probably going to be somewhere in the millions or billions. It's a big number. But just for the purpose of the example, we'll make it 1,000. Then what's going to happen is we're, it's going to move down to this wgitchar, which has a timeout of 300 in our case set. Uh, you know, it might be a different for you. But again, for purpose of example, I'm going to use the number 300. So this is going to wait at least 300 seconds for the user to press a key. If they press it before that, like at 200 seconds or 200 milliseconds, for instance, um, it'll leave before that 300 milliseconds is up. So let's say they press it after 200 milliseconds. And so at, at this point in time, the current time is 1,200 milliseconds because they only waited 200 milliseconds. That last 100 didn't get weighted. Then um, I'm going to create this variable called new input here. I'll explain that in a minute. Don't worry about it yet. Just you're going to need that. So, and we set it equal to error because that's the default value for um, a w get char when it returns. Then uh, down here we're going to set timeout to zero, which means we're not blocking on input. What that means is that when we call w get char, it doesn't wait for input. It, if there's input ready, like if there's a key in the buffer already, it'll pick that up and spit it out. But if it doesn't wait at all, so when we get to this function here, it doesn't wait. It just if there's a key, it picks it up. Otherwise, it, it keeps going. Um, but then we so th we're setting the timeout to zero, so we're non-blocking input. Then um, this right here. Uh, let me just explain this math here a little bit. So uh, this takes our time of last input. So in our example, it was 1,000, and then it adds our timeout value to that. So again, in our case, it's 300, and then it checks to see if that is greater than whatever the current time is. So from our example again, the current time when we first reach this while loop is something like 1200, um, sorry, 1200. 
So obviously it's not greater than that yet. So what this math is basically saying is it's saying wait until the time is greater than whatever the time was before plus the delay. So this guarantees that we wait the full amount of time that our timeout is set. If, if you don't understand the math, just trust me, it waits the full amount of time that our timeout um, is set to. So that's, that's what this math does here. Um, and the reason why we're getting new input on the inside here is say for instance the user pressed a key up here at you know 200 milliseconds but then before the 300 milliseconds is up they change their mind you know they um, they press the right key but then they want to press the they want to change their mind to down what calling this in the in the while loop does is it allows them to change their mind before the full 300 seconds is up otherwise they'd be locked into that first press or their first op their first choice um, I think that's a good thing to do you don't have to implement it that way you could just have it be locked in at their first choice totally up to you um, but I thought this was something that a user would appreciate being able to change their mind before the full time comes out then after this this exits once the full time has been waited so once it exits we want to set the timeout back to whatever it was before the reason why we can set it to just timeout is because our set timeout function doesn't actually our set timeout method doesn't actually set the timeout variable it just sets the timeout on the window so we can just set timeout equal to the timeout it was before um, then this uh, right here, this if statement just checks to see if our new input, it, it basically it just checks to see if they changed their mind. It checks to see if our new input, if there was any new input. Um, and if there wasn't, or if there was, it sets our input variable to that new input. Otherwise, it just doesn't do anything. And then we return input down here. So in, in case anyone didn't know, if the user doesn't change their mind or anything, this will just return that error variable. So that's why this, this works, essentially. So. But yeah, all right, so now that that's all done, let's uh, make and run this, and we should see that it's working. So right now, it's chugging along at 100 milliseconds, you know, one second, and if I spam the right key, I'm spamming it right now, I don't know if you guys can hear it, it doesn't move any faster. I can hold it down too, and it doesn't move any faster, but if I press down, it'll go down, there we go. So. Um, Essentially, it's working the way we expect it to now. Uh, it's waiting the full amount of time before it um, continues on. So I'm going to kill myself. That sounds rude. That's not what I mean. Uh, I'm going to end the game. And uh, oh, it looks like there's something I didn't save here. Um, I'm going to switch this value back to the default value, which is 300, by just getting rid of it. And now we'll have a more realistic game. So you know, I can play around with it now and go get the apple there we go and go down and get the apple again Ooh. so yeah it's all working as expected um, I hope that made sense it's a kind of a complicated thing there if it didn't make sense I hope you're at least able to use it uh, even though it didn't make sense <laughs> Um, yeah, if you guys have any uh, other questions or comments, feel free to leave those down below. I think I may make a few more add-ons to the Snake game over time. Um, the, technically, the game's done, but you know, over time, I might you know do something cool with it, like you know, when as, every time you get a point, it increases the speed a little bit or something, make it a little bit harder. Um, so things like that I might do over time, but my main focus won't be on the Snake tutorial series anymore. I'm going to be working on some other and Chris's tutorials. Speaking of which, if you guys have any suggestions for other tutorials, feel free to leave those down below or on any of my videos. Um, I try to read all of them and comment on or respond to all of them. Um, again, if you like this video, consider giving me a thumbs up. If you want to leave any comments, even though I just said that, leave those down below. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this just as they come out, consider subscribing, turning on all notifications. Um, if you want to support the channel a little bit extra, again, I have that PayPal donate button down below. Um, I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.